Good morning, everybody. Good morning. If you'd like to take your seats, it's time to start. We're live, apparently, are we? Yes, we're live. Live to the world. Lovely to see you all. Um, before we start our worship, um, I've got a few notices to, to bring to you. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name's David. I'm one of the lead leaders here at Mickfield Evangelical Church. It'd be my pleasure to, to lead our service this morning. Um, God's word is being brought by Pastor Michael Lawrence. Michael sitting over there to my right, to your left. Um, Michael, Michael is pastor of Great Blakenham Baptist Church. Has been so for about, what, seven years now, is it, Michael? Seven, seven and a half years. Um, for those of you who don't know Michael, um, about eight, nine years ago, we um, had a, uh, an initiative to um, get involved with a, another church. Not a church plant exactly, but a church revitalization, we called it. God's calling was very clear in that. And um, we got to the leadership at Great Blakenham, and, and the result of it uh, was that about 15 of our membership here went to Great Blakenham and we called Michael as pastor and ever since that time um, it's, it's, it's been great to see the church grow and sort of go its separate way and become established as a, as a church in its own right and so Michael is here um, representing Great Blakenham Baptist Church this morning um, and uh, it's, been, it's been a great um, privilege to work with Michael our sister church down at Great Blakenham, and uh, we trust God will bless you, Michael, as you continue to minister down there in Great Blakenham. A totally different setting to, to what we have here. It's more of a town environment, isn't it? It's surrounded by those um, new estates in Great Blakenham, and so the, the mission field is vast in terms of numbers of people reached. So we pray for Great Blakenham as they continue um, the work, uh, bring, the, bring the gospel to those needy folk on those estates. Um, a few other things just to um, tell you about. I've had a letter from Dave and Janet, Dave and Janet Brown, who most of you know. Um, they moved to Derbyshire about three weeks ago um, to serve, um, to work with Pioneers, a group called Pioneers, a sort of missionary organisation amongst the African churches. So we have a letter back from them, and it goes like this. It starts off, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for the very generous gift you have given to us as we have moved to Chesterfield and get further launched into ministry with Pioneers UK here. It's been three weeks, well it's actually four weeks now, since we left Weathering Set and our family at Mickfield. In that time we've unpacked lots of boxes, found homes for most things and even started to put a few pictures up on the wall. We've also discovered some beautiful places to walk from the front door and a little further afield. We've welcomed visitors, family and friends, and are keen to welcome others to our home here in Chesterfield, less than 10 minutes from Junction 29 of the M1. So if you're passing and need a pause, and spare beds ready if you need a real break. But our move is not about our house and the beautiful countryside. We have for the past couple of Sundays met Africans of a variety of nationalities at a Pentecostal church a couple of miles away. While not our natural comfortable place, nor our theological persuasion, it is perhaps the way to begin to connect with African diasporic Christians in the area. A friend has also sent details of another church with a significant African congregation about 20 minutes drive from here. It's an FIEC church, so we will make a visit after we get back from Keswick next week, where we are representing the Zambezi mission. We'll be sending out further update letter later this week to all those who signed up, if you didn't sign up but would like to, uh, would like regular news from us, um, then just email us. Um, the, the email address is simply Dave and Janet Brown at gmail.com. And we'll include you. May God bless you and make you a blessing to others, as you have been to us. It's great to hear from Dave and Janet, isn't it? And we wish God's blessing on them as they seek that new life up in Derbyshire. Um, I guess you have re realised we have a barbecue after the morning service um, through lunchtime so please stay for that if you're able to um, not sure what the weather's going to do the first Gareth's first words to me this morning that's a funny old day <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we might need to dive for the tent we don't know or indoors anyway you're most welcome to stay um, now 
there's a there's a small group that get here about half past nine in the morning, and uh, the, the role is to undo the tent, do all the IT, set out the chairs, um, and set out the the um, the crash tent and all the stuff in it. Um, and usually at the end of the Sunday, it's the same small group putting it all away again. So it'd be really nice if a few more could just sort of muck in and help at the end of the Sunday, just to take the load off people who have been doing this for what 18 months now a long time um and you know as the church grows there's even more chairs to put out and more stuff to put away so anything you can do to help the little team the nucleus uh, clear up after the the services that would be very much appreciated thank you let's commit our time to the lord as we pray together uh, before we worship him in song let's pray our Father God, it's a real privilege to be able to come out to worship you this morning. Uh, we do ask, gracious God, that you'll give us uh, attentive hearts this morning as we listen to your word being preached, as we read your precious word, as we think, uh, as we share a few thoughts on it. And we pray to that end, Lord, that you'll help Michael as he brings it to us. May our hearts be right with you this morning, Lord, and we do ask that you'll just touch our lives with your holy spirit lord as we worship you this morning for we ask this in jesus name amen let's sing a couple of pieces and um it's time to worship isn't it so what better way to to start our service with come now is the time to worship thank you Ben.
Please take your seats. Yeah. Um, you may be wondering where Rich is. Rich is at home, I think, this morning, um, along with the rest of his family. He was diagnosed positive, or tested positive, so I say, um, last week sometime. So he's been isolating. Been a tough old time for Rich and Catherine and family, so I'm sure we'll, we'll include um, them as a family in our prayers. Um, so we'll pray now, and I'm going to ask Ruth to lead us in a time of prayer. I brought a little bit of paper with me just in case anyone's got anything they would like me to pray about, and I'll write it down so I don't forget. Seems an awful lot of you out there. <laughs> A young boy who's not well. He's young. Um, he's not expected to live, so why not? Oh. Oh, dear. You don't know what his name is? I think it's Aaron, but I'm not sure. Okay. But I've been praying for him this week, and I've got three hours back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. got Rosie down. Got yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything else, anybody? The child, well, not child, it's, we've only got one child. The other two are in camp. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yes, so camps. Yeah. So which camp have they gone to? Oh, I didn't expect Eleanor to be here then. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we've got camp, camps down and children at camp. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's everything. All right, let's pray then. Father, we want to bring you our thanks to start with. We have such an enormous amount to thank you for. Um, we have oh, just everything, just to just look around us and we see how privileged we are as a people. Um, just the fact that we can be here, that we can pray that we can worship you that we can sing um father all these things we've we've taken for granted over the years and this last couple of years these things have been challenged and we're really grateful that we can be here again today and we can just bring you our praise and our thanks father i um i want to bring this prayer to you father it's it's not just about um, a shopping list and the things that we want but we want to really worship you we want to be aware that you are here amongst us that you're listening to everything we say and the responsibility that that puts on all of us so father i pray that you will be with us in this service that you will be with us even during this prayer that you will um take what we say and um that you will use what what you will and that you will um, make people forget the things that are said that perhaps aren't quite right Father I do bring Michael to you today as, as he brings our message to us um, Father we, we're really grateful for our sister church Blake and them they're very close to our hearts and um, Father I pray that you'll be with them today bless them, bless Kevin as he speaks there and just be with them as a church Father and um, provide for all their needs and may they may you guide them in the future as they think about how to reach out to the many people that live around that church so father be with our sister church blakenham and thank you for her this morning father we want to bring our country to you um we're in a mess in so many ways father we um we we've wiped you out of our country we've we've chosen to ignore you and we've um our country as a whole has decided they don't want you and yet father we realize that without you we can do absolutely nothing and you've been very merciful to us over the years father when when we've chosen to um to ignore you you've still shown us mercy and we're very, very grateful to that. But we pray for our country. We pray for our government. We pray for those who are in charge over us. We pray that you will bless them and that you will guide them, even if they don't know they're being guided by you. And we pray that you will show us mercy 
because mercy is the, the only thing we can ask for, really. Father, we pray for our world. Our world is um, also in a pickle in so many different ways. If, you, if we listen to the news, we hear all sorts of terrible things happening. Um, there's floods and um, droughts and wars and um, pandemics and so many different things attacking our world at the moment. And yet when we look in your word, we realize that you said that these things would happen. Exactly what you said was would happen is happening. And we take heart from that because we know that we're, it's not out of control. It's all within your control. It's all within your plan. And you told us long ago that these things would happen. So help us to be ready for the time when you finally come back, we pray. Help us to be ready as a nation, as a people, as a church, as individuals. Help us all to be ready um, for that day when you do finally come back and um, when you change this world forever. Father, I want to bring our missionaries to you, um, Emma and Grace. Um, we haven't heard from them for a little while, but we know that they're struggling with the pandemic just like everybody else. And so I pray for safety for their men. And, and particularly, I pray, I thank you that none of, of the men that they look after have have died in this, Lord. That several of them have had COVID and they're very, very vulnerable. And yet they've all survived. And Father, that's an answer to prayer. And we thank you for that. We pray for Edward and Esme as um, they uh, forge a new life out in this country. We pray that you'll guide them and show them what your plan is for them in the future. Um, Father, we pray for ourselves as a church. We, um, we need you. We need you to guide us in, in the months ahead. This is a, a tricky time for us, Lord. We, we wonder which way to go forward. We have so many different opinions about the, the right way to do things. And, and Father, help us to be gracious. Help us to be guided by you. Help our elders in particular, we pray, that they will seek you in this and that they will um, know what, what it is you're guiding them to do and how, which way to go. Um, Father, we pray for those who are struggling in our church at the moment with health issues of different sorts, some of them mental, some of them physical, some of them maybe financial, Lord. And um, Father, we pray for those people and some we don't even know about, we know, and some wouldn't want us to mention them by name. But Father, you know who they are and we pray that you will be with those people and that you will um, just they'll just know that you're there and that you're taking care of them and that your arms are around them. We do pray for Rich and for KP and for Josh and for Poppy. We pray that they will very soon feel better. Um, we know that Poppy's not been well this week as well, Father, and we just pray that you will be with them as a family. They're finding um, the isolation very, very difficult. Father, just be with them as a family and help us to know how to support them in our prayers during this week. They will be very disappointed that they can't be here, Lord. We know that. Father, we do pray for the camps. We think of um, Red House Farm Camp and all that's going on there this week. We pray for the leadership team, that you will be with them, that you will um, guide them, that you will protect them. Um, that you will keep them free from the children free from accidents and from illness during this time we think of kp as she brings the stories we pray that you'll be with her and, and bless her in that and we just pray for each one father as they um, go to that camp each of the children that this will be a time of uh, just normality for them and a time when they hear about you father we pray for weather in set camp as well for um, the heart children as they're there this week and so many others too father these camps are so so important at the moment with so much going on and our children have been through such a lot in the last few years we thank you that these two camps at least can happen we realize that lots of other camps have had to not open this year and that's that's really tough on the children and, and the camp leaders too so we do bring camps to you this year lord particularly and let them be a blessing, we pray, to the people going. We also pray, Lord, for Open the Book team as they are resuming in September. 
And we pray that you will send people along who can help with, with that team. Um, we want to pray particularly for Rosie today, Lord. She's not well in hospital. And we do pray that you will continue to heal her. She's feeling a little bit better today. We can pray that that, um, that improvement will continue, Lord. Be with the family as they worry about her, no doubt. So just be with Rosie, Lord, and, and bless her and help her, we pray. Father, we want to say thank you for just listening to us. Thank you for just being here with us, just um, just taking the time to um, to come alongside us and to listen to our, our prayers, our requests. Um, Father, you're such a good God, and I just pray that you'll bless us now. I do pray, too, for um, the boy that Marion mentioned. Um, Father, I pray that you will... Um, I don't know what's wrong with him, but that even at this time, Father, that he may be able to reach out to you, we pray, and for his family, Lord, it must be so hard. Please be with that family, we pray, Father, and thank you for all your love to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ruth. <clears throat> thank you, Ruth, for leading us. We can all say amen to what's been prayed for this morning, can't we, knowing that we have a God who hears and a God who answers. So thank you for leading us, Ruth. Um, we're going to read from the Bible now, and I think at this point perhaps the children would like to go to Sunday school. And we're going to be reading from Psalm 100. So if you'd like to turn to Psalm 100, or just uh, follow it on the, the screen, as you would like. And then after that I'll invite Michael up to, to bring us God's word. Psalm 100, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God, it's he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, David. Uh, it's good to be here this morning with you. Well, I say it's good to be here with you. It would have been rich, but so you've got to take it whichever way you want. Um, but it is a, an opportunity to come over and share with you. And just to add to what David said this morning, um, the Mickfield Great Blaken and Partnership still exists. Um, and we're very encouraged by that. And the fact that the church here at Mickfield, whether you realize it or not, still support uh, financially to a certain extent um, me being there. So there is that aspect and that's been, been reduced. But it's still, a, uh, it's still a fact. And so we want to give thanks to you for that, for your uh, support in, in that. And also, uh, with the likes of Friday Club, we have uh, Gareth and Alice turned down, and um, uh, Lena comes down, Rick's been down on occasions, to come down and to support and help us run our children's club down there. You should have come down the other Friday when it was so hot. Gareth came down to cut the grass. Uh, it was fantastic. We were having a water fight, so uh, <laughs> Gareth just got very wet <laughs> while he cut the grass as he went down the, down the line. Uh, so we had a lot of fun. But it's just the, the partnership that is still there uh, across the leadership it's been very different hasn't it over these past um 18 months or so that we've uh, we've experienced kind of like a our semi-independence has kind of come by a forced if you like rather than just a natural progression but it's been good for us in that regard um but we're still there we still exist and uh, it's good just to be able to share with you this morning i have also got to tell you i've been instructed to suggest to you some of you don't know me and, and I did say over there that that might be a good thing. You can tell me afterwards if you think that's a good thing or not. But many of you will know that when I came, I, I was adamant that I would never have a dog. <laughs> uh, never, ha never have a dog. Every time I went, never had a, a dog. Anyway, one Saturday morning in February, I went over to the farm shop and I must have got out of bed the wrong side when I took Natalie to work. Luke suggested uh, a dog uh, to us and, and somehow I, I, I wasn't thinking straight. I must have had something. Uh, anyway, we have a dog, and just to let you know that that is the case, and so I'm, I'm 
you know, when I first came, I used to wear a tie. I don't wear a tie anymore. Now I've got a dog. I've got an accent. I'm being suffocated, as, as, <laughs> as, as people suggested that that would happen. So there we have it. Um, that is that. That's, uh, but just to say, the partnership still still going strong, still going well, and we really appreciate uh, your support in that. And, and hopefully in the coming months, uh, I've suggested to Rich that on a, on a joint growth group on a Thursday night, that that's, that's the time that to come over and just to be able to, to share the things that are going on at Blakenham. So that's uh, something to look forward to uh, in, the, in the coming months. So we're looking at Psalm, 100 and, uh, Psalm 100 this morning. And um, uh, Psalm 100 uh, was the inspiration to an old hymn. Uh, not all of you will know the old hymn, but uh, the, the hymn, All People Here on Earth Do Dwell. I don't know how many of you know that hymn. Uh, but it was the inspiration for that hymn, and it was the only hymn that was sang at the Queen's coronation, for those of you who go that far back. I wasn't there, uh, but for those of you who were, uh, and remember, it was the only hymn that was sung at the coronation. And that's, uh, uh, Psalm 100 was the inspiration to that. But I wonder in these days, how many of you watched the opening ceremony of the Olympics uh, that took place? I can't even remember what day it was. Uh, me and Benjamin watched it, um, part, part of it, and... Uh, oh, you, all, uh, all the stuff that was going on. I think the globe was probably the, the highlight with all the drones. That, didn't you see that? I'm mean, just talking kind of like, you know, some of you watched it. Yeah, fantastic. That was quite cool. But then you see all these, all these nations represented walking through. Did you see those? And, and, and you got yeah, all these countries. And also New Zealand came. Oh, New Zealand, I've been there. That was great. St. Lucia came on, and that reminded me of when uh, I used to go to the primary school back in Jarrah's Cross. They always did, their, their project was St. Lucia every year. Uh, and, they walked through with one athlete, I think. <laughs> and uh, all these different countries, they're all gathered together. And they gathered together uh, in order to, to put on these uh, events that we're going to see over the next uh, couple of weeks or so. Uh, that was their purpose. That's why they got together. The unfortunate thing was that there wasn't anyone in the stadium to witness it, to, to see it all. We could all just beam in and see it on TV and see that. But that was their purpose. That's why they were gathering together. All these nations coming together to uh, perform and compete uh, for all of us to, to see and be uh, wowed about. Uh, even a tennis, table tennis player who was 12 competed, got knocked out, but hey, 12 years old competing in the Olympics, pretty impressive, hey. But that's uh, what was happening there in the Olympics. But here, as we look at Psalm 100, people are gathering together not to compete in some 100-meter dash or 1,500-meter uh, or discus or whatever gymnastics, whatever sport takes you fancy, tug of war. I believe that's in the Olympics this year, perhaps. Um, maybe we could put a team together. I know that McField done tug of war. But uh, here they've come to gather together to worship God. That's their purpose, in order to worship God. And as we look at this psalm, there are, there are things that we can learn on how we are to worship God when we gather together. So when we gather together to worship God, in verses 1 and 2, we are to join in. We're to join in. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. We are summoned to worship God. There's an invitation. It's for all the earth. There is coming a time that the psalmist perhaps uh, was unaware of when he was writing this, that there will be people from every tribe, nation, language and tongue worshipping God in, in heaven. That is what it will be like. And there is a kind of a forward looking to what that will be like, that there will be people from every tribe, nation, language and tongue. But at this given point in time, it was all those who were on the earth who were encouraged to worship the living God, uh, to worship him, to come before him. They were summoned, all the earth. They were come to worship him now, in the NIV, we have this word worship, but uh, for those of you who are aware of other versions of the Bible, the, the Revised Standard Version has it, serve the Lord, serve the Lord. That not only are we to, to worship, we, uh, maybe it's one of the only bees in my bonnet, because I don't wear a bonnet, but it's the only one thing that kind of troubles me is that worship can be seen by, to people by simply singing. Worship is just singing, but that's only one aspect of worship. Worship is not just singing, but it is serving. It is it's giving, it's praying, it's reading God's word. It is singing. It is part of that. But it is serving the Lord uh, as we come together to worship God. We're to serve. And we're to serve. How are we to serve? We're told we're to serve with gladness. 
you know, we can come and serve and we can be all kind of, look at this. it's a chore. But actually we're to serve with gladness. It should be a delight uh, to serve. And then when we come together to join him, we are to sing to the Lord. We're told to come into his presence singing. We're to be then prepared uh, for singing. They're coming along uh, singing. I remember going down to, to Wembley in 2009 to watch Burnley play Sheffield United in a, a, a championship playoff match and uh, gone to the stadium and, and people were prepared before they ever got into the stadium. If you've ever been to an event like that, Ipswich Town, perhaps not, so apologise for that. Uh, you know, I'm just looking at Will over there. Uh, but you've had your celebrations in the past, but we've gone down to Wembley, and there the Sheffield United fans, the Burnley fans, they were all singing even before the game got going. They were prepared. They were, they were going into the ground singing for what was going to happen. And they got into the ground singing as they went. They prepared. They were, that's how they were going in. I'd had my ticket. I was invited to go in a sense. I was going with joy, and I was going singing the songs uh, of, of Burnley Football Club. And so as we gather together this morning, we're to join in. It's an invitation for us to come. as an opportunity for us to serve the Lord. And we've, we've seen this morning there's a, an opportunity for, for people to get involved in serving by packing up things at the end. Uh, it was interesting, last week I was uh, sharing experiences of what it was like when I was growing up. Now, some of you might not know what an overhead projector is. All right? When I was at church... When I was growing up, it was the young people were to take the offering. They would go around with the bag. I don't know if you ever remember that. You ever remember those kind of days? They used to go around with the bag. We don't do that anymore, do we? So that kind of, that job's ruled out of the equation. And the other one was the overhead projector. But now we've got all this digital stuff. And so there we were us with the overhead projector. And, and you had to put the slides on. And then if the preacher had his, all his points on, you remember that? You had a piece of paper and you kind of like slid it down to reveal the next point and all the rest. Do you remember those days? And then it just happened that these curly ones at the side, if they curled up, we had 2P coins that we used to put on the corners. And you could just see the... The 2p coin, the, the kind of like the silhouette in the corner. But that's how we served, that's how we began. There were ways in which as young people we got involved in serving. And now I've suggested that, you know, maybe our young people and others, you know, we've got to find different ways in which to serve because we don't do those things anymore. But there are things, you know, now we're having to set up, aren't we? Uh, we're outside just as you're outside. It's almost like being in a school set up, a church in school. If you've ever experienced that, you know, people go in in advance and they set the chairs out into the school hall and then when they finish, they've got to pack it all up and they finish. You know, once a day we didn't have to do that, did we? Because it was all in the building, all set up and it was all, all there. But now there's these extra jobs for us to do. So we can serve and we can sing. We can prepare our hearts before we come. And as we come into the tent to be able to uh, be singing. There was a time, wasn't there, when perhaps some of us remember coming into church and we would just sit quietly before the, the service started just as we began to think and to focus on the reason why we were here just to remember that we've come to worship the true and living God which we will look at in a moment. Hebrews tells us that we're to offer our bodies as living sacrifices holy and acceptable to him which is our spiritual act of worship. So we're giving ourselves uh, to worship God, we're coming in to uh, worship him, we're to join in. So we're giving ourselves to him, to join in. And so when we gather to worship God, we're to join in, but then in verse 3, we're to join in using our intellect. We're to join in using our in intellect. Verse 3 says, know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. It tells us a lot here, but the psalmist is saying, look, you need to know God, you need to know why you're here. This is the reason, and, the, and he gives us some things to, to consider. It's not just knowing about, but it is actually knowing. I was trying to think how I can best explain this, but when I was, again, when I was growing up in our home, my parents used to tell me how God had provided for them through uh, the times that they'd gone to Bible college, they'd gone to the faith mission to study there, and they used to tell us the stories. I've been reading my Bible, and I could see how God was providing for Abraham. I knew about God's provision, and I could, I could see that. I could even see in the current day my brother serving at um, 
uh, a Christian mission organization and how God was providing for him. I knew about the fact that God provided. But it wasn't until that I had gone to Bible college myself and kind of stepped out of the boat, as it were, with Peter, if you remember, to actually experience that for myself, to know that God provides, to know these things for myself. There's a difference about knowing about and knowing, isn't there? And it's knowing, it's knowing. And he says, know that the Lord is God. Experience that. And what does he tell us about God? Well, he tells us, firstly, that he is the creator. That the Lord is the creator. It is he who made us, and we are his. He has made us. We are created in his image. He's created as male and female. And it's important for us to know that. And in these days, we may well swim against the tide as we stand on what the Bible teaches us, that we are created in God's image, male and female. And that's that. That is it. That is the position that we hold as believers. We are to know that God has made us and that is how he has made us. We also see that he is the almighty God. Therefore, he is the all-powerful God. He is the creator of the universe. And it's to this God that we have to deal with. I mentioned there was a, a picture of a lightning strike. I don't know how many of you saw the image on the BBC website of someone who got caught in a thunderstorm down near Hampton Court Palace. And they hid under a tree. And as they were hiding under the tree, they just happened to take a selfie. And at the moment they took the selfie, the lightning hit the tree. And it's just a, a, a bright, it's like it's on fire. The whole tree looks like, I don't know if you, if you saw the picture. But the, the Bible tells us that the voice of the Lord is like lightning. And if that's what it does, this is the creator God, the all-powerful God, whom we deal with. He's almighty God, and yet we can call him Father. There is the, the both that we carry. He is our heavenly Father, but yet he is our creator God. And that is whom we have to, to deal. We, someone has said, you know, he's, he's not almighty God. He is almighty. He is all-powerful. So he's our creator. But then he's our redeemer. He's our deliverer. He says we are his people. So David is writing this and he's looking back and he's saying we're, we're his people. We belong to him. The Israelites were his people. And we just have to go back a little bit to Exodus. I think I spoke about Exodus uh, when I was last here in the winter when it was really cold. Uh, now it's really, really quite different. But he'd set them free from slavery in Egypt. He demonstrated his power over the gods of Egypt in every case. That's what those ten plagues are doing. Demonstrating the power of God over all these things that he is the all-powerful God. He had set them free. He had delivered them from slavery. Why? Was it because they were anything uh, special out of the ordinary? No. Uh, we're told that they were the smallest of all people. But he chose them because of his grace. And grace is being given what we don't deserve. And he chose them because of his mercy, which is not being given what we do deserve. So he's our creator, he's our deliverer. And then he says, he's our shepherd. We are the sheep of his pasture. And as we consider what a shepherd looks like, he's one who provides and he leads. He protects and he cares. I've mentioned before that the only time I've ever seen a shepherd was out there in, in Kosovo. Uh, and there was this shepherd who was looking after these sheep and he was with the sheep all day. And he walked wherever they went and he led them to the places that he had to go to. It's not the shepherd that we have in our country where they kind of just seemingly let the sheep just do their own thing. But over there they were with them, protecting, keeping them safe, providing for them. So we are to join in using our intellect. Uh, Alistair Begg, who uh, is a, a, a Scottish uh, preacher out in um, America, uh, we were listening to him on one, uh, one occasion, but he's, he shared an experience of his where he went to a church on one occasion where the worship leader started saying, uh, started the service by saying, how are you all? How are you all feeling? And he said, <laughs> he said, that's not where I want to come from. He says, it's not how I feel, it's, 
I want to know something that's going to help me to worship. He says they went on just to sing a whole range of songs uh, based on the fact of how they were feeling. But for us, uh, I don't think we should be doing that. I think it is more, as Alistair Begg has it, that we should... Um, it's not based on our feelings. We may be feeling great this morning. We may have had a really good week. And so may we, we may find it easier to worship God this morning. But it might be this morning that there are those of us here who have not had a great week, who have had a, a, even a struggle to come to church this morning, who are not finding it easy. And for those of us, it will be a sacrifice of praise. But whatever, whatever our circumstances, we need to remind ourselves of who God is. It, God spoke to Malachi and said, I, the Lord, do not change. Our faith is not built on feelings, but is built on facts. Our feelings can go up and down and can change, but God doesn't change. The facts don't change. And so we need to focus our thoughts on Him and join in using our intellect. But do then we see Jesus here? Jesus is our Creator. He was there at the beginning of the world. And that's why it says in Genesis chapter 1, it says, Let us make man in our image. The Trinity is there. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our likeness. He is our Redeemer. He is our Deliverer. He has paid the price for us through His blood, shed on the cross, in order to set us free, not from slavery, physical slavery, but to set us free from slavery to sin, so that we can live for Him. No longer living in sin, but living for Him. And He can be, if He is not already, He can be your good shepherd. David wrote Psalm 23 saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. This morning God is still the creator, whether we believe it or not. He is the creator. He is our deliverer. He's come for the whole world to set them free. When Jesus died, it wasn't just for me and for you. It was for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. He is the savior of the whole world, whether people believe it or not. But is he your shepherd? Is he my shepherd? Can we say, as David said, the Lord is my shepherd? shepherd jesus is my shepherd peter writes in his first letter in chapter 2 verse 10 once you were not a people but now you are the people of god having received mercy if we've come to know christ if we've received him as lord and savior then we belong to god and these things are true for us and these are the things that we know and that build up and encourages us to to worship god as we gather together that we are using our intellect So we're to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we gather together to worship God, we're to join in, using our intellect. And then in verses 4 and 5, with good reason. Here, the psalmist gives us three reasons. He says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And the three reasons that we have set before us are these. One is that his goodness... For the Lord is good. He is righteous. Our definition of good may be different to God's definition of good. And so righteous perhaps is a better word. The righteousness of God. God will do what is right in different circumstances. He is right. Uh, the, the, the psalm says, Ascribe to the Lord uh, the glory that's due to his name. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. He is righteous in all his ways. So we have his goodness. And then we have his love or his mercy, depending on what you read. His love and his mercy which endure forever. Paul speaks of faith, hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. When we get to heaven, when we meet Jesus face to face, we won't need faith anymore. We won't need hope anymore. But love will remain. 
Love will be what remains. It endures forever. And his love for us endures forever. And then his faithfulness continues through all generations. The faithfulness of God. And he is faithful to his word. Down at Friday Club, we've been learning uh, Bible verses. And that uh, when God speaks, he acts. And if, does he promise and not deliver? No, he is faithful. When he promises, he delivers. He is faithful to his word. And we've been looking at the faithfulness of God down there. I, I'm glutton for punishment, I'm afraid, when it comes to buying anything. Uh, whenever I buy anything, I have, to, I have to read the customer reviews. I don't know how many of you do that. And so as a result of that, I never buy anything. Because <laughs> I don't think there's a good product out there. Well, someone's always got a bad thing to say about something. Uh, so, but we, we, people put these customer reviews on their experiences of what they've purchased, what they've bought, um, where they've been, whether it be a hotel or a trip or a, a restaurant. We're, we're good at giving bad reviews, aren't we, about restaurants, but we're not so good about giving good ones. <laughs> we can always complain about the food that we've had. But these customer reviews, but here the psalmist has given us reason why. He's given us his customer reviews of his like of what God is like. We've seen who he is, the creator, the deliverer, the shepherd. But here we have his characteristics, his faithfulness, his love, and his goodness to us. And so we have these reasons. And so what do we make of these things for us today? Well, I think we need to be meditating and learning and uh, putting into practice these things, experiencing these things for ourselves. To meditate on God's word. Meditating is not to try and empty our minds, but it's rather to fill our minds with God. To think on him. Paul writes, you know, think on things that are lovely and pure and true and worthy. And as we do that, I believe it will lead us to praise and worship. So when we gather together, we are to join in using our intellect with good reason. He has given us good reason to do so. How will it shape us then? We're to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. It's our spiritual act of worship. To prepare ourselves as we come to worship Almighty God, joining in using our intellect of what we know of him with the good reasons that we have, that we can be encouraged that he does not change, that we worship him with all our hearts. Thank you, Michael, for bringing us the message this morning. And we're here for good reason, aren't we? We're here for a very good reason, to give thanks to our God, to, uh, to come as a living sacrifice and to praise his name and to recognise his faithfulness. And the last two songs that we're going to sing sort of recognise that. Um, we're going to be singing Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart and the hymn Faithful One, um, based on verses four and five of what we've looked at this morning. So thank you, band.
Let's close with those words found in verses 4 and 5 of Psalm 100. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we've been able to come here this morning with thanksgiving. We've been able to praise you in song through our prayers, through reading your word and through listening and hearing the word of God as your servant Michael has brought it to us this morning. So we thank you, Lord. You are good. You are always good. And Father, you are a faithful God. You are an eternal God. Your love endures forever. What is our response to that, Lord? It's to present ourselves as living sacrifices, to look for those areas of service, to praise you for giving your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to save us from our sin. So, Father, we want to thank you for our time spent together this morning and pray that we'll continue now as we uh, enjoy a bite to eat and a time spent together. Lord, we thank you that we can now meet again in person. We can chat to each other and enjoy each other's company. But, Lord, let us not uh, forget as we leave this place today of your faithfulness and your love for each and every one of us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You've just watched one of our online services and we hope that it was helpful. Great that you could join us. If you want to find out more as a church, we have over 200 videos on our YouTube channel and you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Maybe you want to get in touch with us where mickfieldec at gmail.com. As a church, we exist to introduce people to the Christian faith to help you investigate Jesus.